Good evening and welcome once more to the chapel at St. Clement's Episcopal Church in Tampa, Florida. We thank you for spending your time with us this evening. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His, His mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbour. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God forgives all who truly repent. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have laboured in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. As now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honoured in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be called my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm for today is Psalm 71, verses 1 through 14. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evil doer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. 
From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me off in my old age, forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him, go after him and seize him, because there is none who will save. O God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O my God. Let those who set themselves against me be put to shame and be disgraced. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But I shall always wait in patience and shall praise you more and more. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, that the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life for this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come into this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, 
an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. After Jesus had said this, he departed and hid from them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I remember the very first time I saw a Vulcan. I'd gone down to Manchester in England to go to the guitar shop I used to get guitar strings from, and as I made my way from the bus station, I saw a Vulcan. And then I saw a Klingon. And then I saw people in Star Trek uniforms. Welcome to the world of Comic Con. The first one I'd ever seen in England, and the very first time I'd seen people dressed up in proper uniforms to emulate their fans, or sorry, more to emulate the people of whom they were fans. Of course, people who get into this kind of thing do it for the fun of it. They really enjoy the programs and the characters, but some take it more seriously than others. There are people who know word for word the script of the movies of Star Wars, and if you just mention something, they'll say, oh no, that's wrong. It's actually this. And they are right. They take all the time that they need to, to learn about the characters and the parts of space they're in, the machines and the spaceships that are used, everything about it. They are fanatics, rightly called. In today's Gospel, we have some Greeks coming up and they say to Philip and then through Philip to Philip and Andrew, we want to see Jesus. What was it about Jesus that they'd heard? Maybe the miracles? Maybe it was the triumphal entry where people were saying Hosanna and Hosanna. Who knows? But there was something about Jesus that made people want to come and see him. And thus it's been for over 2,000 years. People want to see Jesus. But if you notice, Jesus doesn't say, oh God, this is really cool. Not only am I getting people who are Jewish listening to me, the Greeks are doing it as well. No. He goes all strange and starts talking about the end of days and my time has come and things will be fulfilled. What is the link? Well, because there's more to Jesus than just to see him. To know Jesus is to be as fanatical as those people who watch Star Wars and Star Trek and whatever film is around or TV shows around that people really get involved with. We have to be as fanatical as those who love NASCAR and football and baseball and all the other sports. That we know all the statistics about each individual player. We have to get inside, not only to see Jesus, but to know him. And then not only to know him, but to believe in him and to live as he would want us to live. That's been a tall order for the church for the 2000 years because we've hardly ever done it correctly. And so when people come to see us nowadays, we get called all sorts of things. One of them being hypocrite. And yes, we are, because none of us truly follows Jesus enough to warrant the real name of Christian. None of us 
takes the time enough to find out who Jesus really is and take him seriously at his word and live as he would want us to live. But we do our best, some more than others. We spend our time reading scriptures, learning about Jesus. We spend our time being around those people who influence us. Now there's a word. If we go on YouTube, you'll see any number of influences, which I think means that because you like them, you're likely to buy the stuff they want to sell you. How many Christian influencers are there? How many do we know? How many live a life that we look at and think, wow, I want to be like that person. What's their secret? Because one thing we do know about Jesus is he attracted people to him and people were willing to die for him. May we all grow in faith this Holy Week that we may not just wish to see Jesus, but to allow Jesus to come into our lives in a real meaningful way. That when people see us, they will want to know what the secret is. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honour one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honour and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may, may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We bring before you all those who are suffering from the COVID-19 virus, all of them in hospital, all those who are in isolation. We pray for those separated from loved ones, that they may realize it's for the good of all that this is happening. We pray and give thanks for all those frontline people who are helping keep society going with food and distribution, those healthcare workers who look after all who are sick, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Clement, our patron, and all the saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to God's unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sins was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, and by his suffering and death, become the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin, become subjects to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. Sanctify these gifts by your Holy Spirit, that they may be to your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant right. us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for spending time with us. I do hope you enjoyed this sharing of worship. Please join us again tomorrow at the same time. In the meantime, stay safe and God bless. <laughs>